guys like strawberries? How many of you guys like chocolate? Yes. How many of you guys like chocolate covered strawberries? <laughs> cool. Well, today is your lucky day because today I will be um, explaining step by step how to make chocolate covered strawberries. So, first, I will be explaining the ingredients you will need to make chocolate covered strawberries the steps for preparation, and the actual process in making chocolate covered strawberries. So first, the ingredients you will need, and this goes for about two pounds of, of strawberries, so um, it can vary. So first, you will need um, about two cups of, ch of milk chocolate, half a cup of white chocolate, about two pounds of shrimp, or I'm mean, sorry. Shrimp. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, two uh, mixing bowls, a uh, pot of water, um, and it's going to be about a fourth cup filled with water. Um, you need napkins, lots of napkins, spoons, and wax paper. So for the strawberries, to pick the strawberries, you would probably want to pick the ones that are red but not too ripe, and you definitely don't want to take the ones that are mushy because those um, are the ones that will ruin your chocolate while you dip them. So for the steps for preparation, you want to first wash the strawberries in warm water. Then you want to dry each of the strawberries individually, and you want to make sure that each strawberry is completely dry. So you don't want any water from like the stems or the strawberry to go inside the chocolate, or it's going to become very clumped, and you like it'll just ruin the chocolate. So. You want to make sure each of them are completely dry. So once you dry each one completely, you will set it aside and put it on a separate plate. And while um, all those are on a separate plate, you want to take the pot filled with water and put it on the stove for about five minutes on high heat. And um, once it starts to boil, you want to take one of the mixing bowls and Preferably, you want one of the or uh, the mixing bowls to be larger than the pot because when you put the mixing bowl on the pot, you don't want it to touch the, the boiling water or that'll burn your chocolate as well. So place the um, the mixing bowl onto the pot and turn it on low heat after, and you're gonna put about half of the chocolate into the mixing bowl, and you want to stir it completely. And it'll take about five minutes until the chocolate's completely melted. And depending on how many strawberries you have, you um, will want to like constantly put the, the chocolates in to just kind of depending on how many strawberries you need to dip. And so once that is, um, once the chocolate is melted, then you're gonna take the strawberries and dip it halfway into the chocolate. And for the smaller strawberries, you want to just dip it straight in. But for the larger ones, you want to kind of tilt it to the side because you don't want the, the bottom of the strawberry to actually touch the bottom of the mixing bowl because that will also ruin your chocolate and you're just going to have to start all over. So you repeat that process um, until all the strawberries are finished. And um, you want to place them onto the wax paper after you're done um, dipping them and put them right into the refrigerator for about five minutes. And while they're actually cooling, you want to take the second mixing bowl and put it onto the, the pot, the boiling water. And you're going to pour in the white chocolate and you're going to mix that as well and it'll take about three minutes. And you want to turn the heat onto low and Take a Ziploc and pour the, the white chocolate into the Ziploc and you're going to put it into the Ziploc right here and you're going to squeeze it onto the, onto the strawberries and just to make a little design. So once that is finished, you're going to place it into the refrigerator and so today I actually showed you the ingredients, the steps for preparation, and the actual process of how to make chocolate covered strawberries. And in conclusion,
confusion, I actually have strawberries for you. And this is what the final product will look like. She knows which side, but yeah. There we go. What? <laughs> oh, thank you. Take one of those. speaking yeah. earlier? Well, I was here, but I thought that she was not meant to be here. I got you. The <laughs> listening thing that we talked about earlier. Gotcha. All right, Jade. Um, really? An audience survey is your attention device? You got a prepared speech, and you're going to do that? Even though I've warned you, it works okay, because you, you kind of make a joke out of the fact that you do three of those questions in a row, and you expect a particular kind of response. And how come they sit on his desk? That's just not right. No, that's no, okay. Um, your goal is very clearly stated. Uh, you have a good preview of what you're going to talk about, so all of the early structural stuff is okay. On content, the, the visuals are okay to show the ingredients, that sort of thing, but you have a lot of procedural steps that you're talking about, and nobody's going to be able to remember those. You need to have some visual content to go with that. So if you put those cooking steps, you know, bring this to a boil first, uh, melt these second, you know, cool this off first, you know, whatever, whatever the procedural steps are, if you had just a couple of visuals to go with that, that would make it so much easier for people to remember and be able to do those things. People have a vague recall of it, but they're good. if they were going to go home and do this right now, I know that some of them would ruin it. The strawberries would probably be very dry. But that's about the only thing that they'd get right, you know, because you were very good on explaining why it's important that the strawberries be dry before you do this. But uh, the order in which you are melting things or cooling things off or laying them out, that I think needs a, a lot more detailing on it. So that's content-wise. Otherwise, you're doing fine. Now, on the uh, visual factors when you're presenting, uh, you start off facing the audience pretty well, but there are several times during the speech when I know you kind of keep looking over your shoulder and then you start turning toward the screen. You never turn and give the speech to the screen, but it constantly feels like you're angling at the screen. And what's really odd is that there's nothing different on the screen for the first three minutes of the presentation and you keep turning back there as if it is changed behind you and you don't have anything else so I don't know why you keep turning you should be talking to us in that situation um, gestures are okay your facial expressions you look pretty animated while you're speaking like you're enjoying yourself good eye contact because you're not really looking at a script you're not dependent on the notes I'm, I'm just pausing until everybody else is done because I, I, sorry, I think I've explained before that I am a <coughs> single track thinker and the distractions really wipe me out. So I get off track. So if you could pause, thank you. Um, uh, the, the vocal presentation is fine. You're loud and clear. There's enough variety in your voice to make it interesting. You do have a 
problem with the pacing primarily because you use a transition word repeatedly in the presentation that makes it sound like the speech is one long sentence with a whole bunch of commas in it. And, 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 and. I want you to, when you do your online evaluation of yourself, I want you to count the number of ands that you have. And how many sentences did you connect together with the word and? And notice how it kind of makes your speech go like that, like that, like that, like that. It just, it just feels awkward because you use that transition so many times. So I, I know that you're trying to keep everything flowing smoothly together, but instead of it flowing smoothly together, it, it gives it this awkward kind of rhythm. And that's not something that you want to have. Um, other than that, I didn't see any anxiety issues that were going on, and of course, you've got a nice bribe to finish off the speech. Everybody appreciates that. Thank you. <laughs>